Hello everyone, this is Leo with Scraptastic Patchwork and we are not live. So I apologize for that. I had some issues and so I pre-recorded this just in case. And so here we are. So you should have six of your chaotic elements completed. And so if you're just joining us, this is week four of the Scrappy Improv Quilt Along. This is an improv quilt that I designed to represent the year 2020. We're going to have 10 chaotic elements represented, balanced with calm by the fabric choices that we make. So I brought you outside here today because my husband made this incredible arbor for an event that unfortunately didn't get to happen because of COVID and issues. So um, I'm gonna insert a couple pictures of us that we took <laughs> um, underneath this incredible arbor. It's a Nordic, kind of a Scandinavian um, arbor that he just made with all kinds of stuff, dead stuff he found in our yard, in our property. So I am the one that will be able to benefit from it because I'm going to use it as a backdrop for a lot of my projects now. So we're out here today. It, we just had a couple snowfalls in October. It's going to be a very snowy winter, but that's okay. So I had what I was going to cover in this live, if I was going to have this live episode, was I was going to throw a curveball at you guys. If, if you go back to week one, I talk about that. And if you haven't already, check out the playlist below. All of these episodes will be there. The curveball. Let's go inside and talk about what this curveball is. So what is the curveball? Well, if you had been astute enough to notice in the opening sequence there, all of these blocks have had something done to them. So this is what the curveball is. It's a bonus technique. It's called inserts. So in all of the cases of your sections here, your chaotic sections, we are going to slash them and insert another calm piece. So you can either, in all cases you're going to cut them on the short side here, not this side. So you're not going to do a horizontal cut, you're going to do a vertical cut. You can make that cut uh, straight up and down, or you can do leading to the left or to the right. I would vary it. So don't pick one of those angles and just stick with it because of what our ultimate layout is going to be, you will need to vary that a bit. So this is what we're doing. Wherever your calm is, this one just happens to be right in the middle, so I picked it as the example, but I have one that's way over to one side. I'll show you in a bit. Wherever that calm is, make sure that your cut is through it somehow. So it can be down here, it can be up here, doesn't matter. Just make sure your cut is through it. So I'm gonna start like this, and I'm just gonna go this angle. Okay, so that's what we have. Then I cut about an inch, maybe inch and a quarter, 
slice of my calm and you have to make sure that you make your length is big enough to go across the entire block here so this one's long enough to make sure that I I do that so in my case I think I just cut all of mine ahead of time at about an inch inch and a half somewhere in there and uh, all of them I think I did about 14 13 or 14 inches long so now you're just going to sew those together and then you will have a intersected insert into all of your blocks so I'm going to go sew that so after sewing that piece in this is what it looks like and I wasn't even careful to make sure that it lined up again I just sewed it however I wanted to so now you will on each of your blocks wherever that column is you're going to intersect with that insert piece and that is a another technique in improv is this insert um, but I'm not going to call it an official technique for this so it's just going to be bonus let me show you though the rest of my blocks my rest of my chaotic elements with this insert so this one's hard to see because this is the original little tiny piece that was in the center I just went straight up this one it was the center block this is one I didn't show you uh, my second block my second chaotic element in the crazy log cabin technique this is what that one turned out to be and I even added in that other bonus technique which is the faux seam I just thought I wanted to do that again so I made it even wonkier so with my insert piece it offset that center column that I had put in there here's this one my column was over here so here's my intersected insert piece this one my column was way over here just a tiny little thing so that one went that direction and then here's another one that just went right straight up vertically to intercept my big column at the top here so as I said very so I have I think I have two straight and I have two going off towards the right and two going off yeah here's the straight one yeah going off to the left so just vary those so that when we go to put them all together in the layout that you'll have options okay so I have decided so I'm improving the quilt along here <laughs> I have decided because I am NOT going to do the live show I'm gonna instead speed this thing up and I'm going to add the fourth technique to this video because I'm anxious to get this layout done and I think that when we go to quilt it because we're gonna be doing some hand quilting I think I'll slow it down then so I decided to just put two weeks into one this week uh, due to the fact I'm not giving you guys the live show or the live episode so let me discuss the fourth technique to prepare for this fourth technique you will need to make some scrappy squares well it's easier to do it squares but you you actually only need a triangle you have four leftover chaotic elements that you had initially written down these four were the more important ones the ones that gave you the most difficulty this year the ones that kind of stuck with you that you just ugh. <laughs> so those four are what is going to be represented now so for each of those four pull your fabrics audition your fabrics and then make a scrappy smaller section here from all the other techniques 
So you can do curves. You can do log cabin. So those those wavy, wavy uh, strip sets, scrappy strip sets. You can do the crazy log cabin. You can do fabric cobbling. Any of those things that we have already practiced, you can use for these four elements. Because initially you will need four sections that are approximately 10 and a half to 11 this way, 10 and a half to 11 this way, and about 15 this way. So you'll need this right here to work with your four last chaotic elements. So for me, it was just easy to do kind of a square and then what I'm going to cut off, I will use for my backing. So that's why I decided to do it this way. Okay, so do those initially, four different ones. Then we're going to insert again. Think of this as your kind of aim point here, this corner. So as I said, 10 and a half by 11, or at 10 and a half to 11 on these two sides, this is 15. So I'm gonna just kind of ballpark it here, cut off what I don't need. This I will save, as I said, for my backing. So this is what you're aiming for, any way you wanna make it. Then towards this corner here, make a cut. It can be this way, it can be this way. I mean, don't cut through your corner necessarily maybe just kind of anywhere in this area anywhere in this area head towards so I'm gonna go about right here and now I'm going to insert my calm and sew that together here's my piece after inserting my calm and this is the same size strip as you used for the inserts for the other uh, six. So I cut widthwise maybe an inch, inch and a half, and my length, you know, was a approximately 15 because I cut them all at the same time, but you wouldn't have had, you know, this is only like, what, six, seven inches long. Then I cut it off. So you're just looking for that you know, inch, inch and a half, somewhere in there. So insert your column there. I'll show you my other ones here. That one's kind of wonky, which is cool. And then this one, just for fun, there's no reason for it. I just sewed them together. <laughs> so we have four different triangles, approximately, with our little calm straight through them at an angle. This one's fun because it got real skinny right down there. Okay, now here's where the layout comes together. So my concept for this quilt was that if you can picture a still calm pool of water and then you thump a rock in the middle of it, or maybe a smaller uh, pool of water, or even a bowl of water, like in a sink or something, and you do a drop of water in the middle of it, those ripples come off of that. We're doing the opposite. So instead of a calm pool that you cause chaos, we're dropping calm and causing ripples of calm into our chaos, if you kind of understand what I'm, <laughs> I hope I, under, I explained that properly, but once you see the layout, you can kind of get what my, where my mind was. So the middle of this quilt is going to be a big calm, and then it's going to ripple out into the chaos. All right, so for this, I'm going to sneeze, hang on. All right, 
only one sneeze. Sometimes I do two big ones. Okay, so this is where the, the big calm comes into play is in the middle of this quilt. So you can do this to one of two ways. Either cut out four squares, 10 and a half inches approximately. Of course, we're, you know, we're still just using scissors. So four of those, or what I'm going to do is I, you know, and this is all dependent on how much of your calm fabric you have left. If you only have scrappy amounts, then you can do it this way. And then you'll just have seams in the middle because you're going to do all the four calm ones in the middle together. Or you can do a 20 by 20 piece, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so this is what we're going to do for the fourth technique. We're going to do big curves, big arcing curves. Now that technique is done in traditional quilting as well, like in a drunkard's path quilt um, with a template. But we're not going to do a template, but I have found that this big arc is actually easier than the wavy ones. So I don't know. I think I'm going to use this a lot. If you choose to use just the squares, the four squares, what you want to do is the upper left, you want to place a pin about a quarter inch in. And the same for this bottom right, this way. Okay, so you have these two, this is going to be your starting and stopping of your cut, your curve, your big arcing, arching, arcing uh, cut will be here to here. So do that to all four of your pieces. If you're going to be using the big piece, like I am, first of all, I'm gonna cut this down. I think I, I rough cut this to about 21 or 22. So I wanna just kind of even out this a bit. You know, this whole quilt has been you know, all the piecing has been approximate because I wanted it that way, but uh, I'm going to try to even out my pieces, I mean my big square a little bit. So you fold it in half and then fold it in half again. I'm going to go press this so that these are nice and crisp. So my measurement uh, for this is only 10 by 10 because I don't need to worry about my middle seam allowances like you would if you're using four different squares. So I'm gonna just place my tape measure here and just start my cut at 10. And I'm gonna put it up here and I'll just aim, keep my cut there at 10. And same here. Ten. And aim for ten. Whoops. So now I have a 20 by 20 piece and it's got these nice press lines. That will help me in my marking my pins now. So same thing from that pressed line. I do a quarter of an inch on either side of all four of these pressed lines all around. So I'm going to have how many? Eight. I'll have eight pins. <laughs> I am going to place a pin about halfway here. Put these two things together so that it doesn't shift. And you can actually use those pins that you use to mark as well. If you want to use uh, chalk as well, instead of pins, you can do that. It may be easier 
um, to get your scissors by that pin. It, it may be difficult. It's up to you. Um, we are going to use the chalk again, though. Okay, so it doesn't matter. You know, when we did the wavy ones, we were aiming for, you know, things to match up here. That's not going to matter because we're going to mark, we're going to make a few marks to both pieces of our fabric so that we know exactly how they match up. So that's okay that this is overlapping and not matching up. No big deal. So when you do overlap, just make sure that you have enough fabric past this pin here and past this pin here and of course up here okay so now we're going to make our our arching our arc i don't know what to call it it's a big curve and you end at that pin so you take off this calm fabric and with that matched up still, you make a few marks on both sides. I'm gonna make three. So that I know when I go over to the sewing machine when I put right sides together, I just mark those, put those marks together and then pin, and then I know that it's in the right place. So at the machine now, you have these marks that you've made. So you measure, you match those up, place a pin, and then I look for the other one that I made, which is right there. Put my glasses on <laughs> okay and you know this is on the bias too probably well it is for sure on this one but with your scraps too so just be really careful that you're not stretching so I look for my other one it's right there I match those together so now I know for sure these three points. Now, if you want to go ahead and do more than that, feel free. I am now going to sew my curve. And as I said, this is easier to me than even the, the waves. So let's sew. this and that's one of my corners done so I'm gonna do one more with you I'm gonna uh, do a different angle so you can see me better sewing this together and so after that we're gonna do all four corners and if you have if you're doing it with the smaller squares then after you get your corners together or after you've done your corners then sew the four together so that all your calm is in the middle all right, so I'm going to put this one under, making sure I have enough overlap there and overlapped there and in the middle. I'm going to place a pin right here to keep everything together. And now I'm going to cut. I'm going to actually get that out of there. OK, 
Okay, I can move this one out of my way. Take my comb off, match that back up. Mark. All right, let's go to the machine. All right, we're going to try this angle. I've never tried this one before. So, all right, so here's my marks. Boom, boom. Put those together. And find the ones over here. And up here. Being careful not to stretch any fabric. All right, time to sew. Just take your time. Because there's not any switchbacks like you do have in the waves. You have a bit more space to sew in. What the heck is this guy doing? Way too much seam allowance here. I don't have my proper scissors over here, so. All right, now I can see a little bit better. So it's this that it's just a gradual curve, so just easier, I think. And you don't need a drunkard's path template. You can do it yourself. done two more to go so here is what the layout should look like we've got two of the chaotic elements on the top row going the horizontal way two on the bottom and then in the middle we've got our drop of uh, calm with two of the chaotic elements on either side of it vertically. So you can sew it together like three rows, top row, middle row, bottom row. And you can do it however you want. If you want to do straight seams, you can do straight seams. If you would like to do it in slightly curved seams, you can do that too. It's, it's totally up to you at this point, but now at least you can see the vision You've got calm in the middle of chaos, and that calm is shooting out into those chaotic sections. So eventually, if you would kind of follow the logic, if there is any of this, eventually there would be way more calm on these these issues in our life this year.
So does that make sense? So I think about kind of like, um, you know, I referred to that, that calm pool of water. So up north, um, my favorite place to go, uh, the, the North shore is, there's a, is rocky shore, uh, on Lake Superior and the water has over time made these pools, these indentations in the rock. And when the, you know, when it rains or when the waves are really wild up there, these pools of water will fill these indentations. And you might have a deep one, and then you'll have these fissures coming off of it. That's kind of what I was thinking of when I was creating the layout, is that calm is filling in the fissures of our chaos. And eventually that, that calm will cover it all. So hopefully that, that makes sense, that visual makes sense to you guys. <laughs> um, so next week, we're going to start sandwiching this and working on our backing. Now, again, it's totally up to you if you would like to do a single fabric backing. I'm going to use all my leftover scraps and patchwork that I've cut off this and kind of come, come up with a, a pieced back as well. I, I don't know really how it's going to turn out quite yet. We'll discuss that next week, but um, sew this together. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And at the end of this video, I will show you a bit of a slideshow of um, how mine came completely together. So thank you very much, you guys. Have fun <laughs> coming up with your layout. Um, I, I really hope that you get this because it's actually, now that I've made it, it's, it looks even better than what I visualized in my head. So <sighs> it's nice when that comes together like that. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't, check out the playlist if you haven't gotten caught up with this series. Like, comment, ask me questions. Again, I apologize that my, it, it was a combination of technical issues as well as me having anxiety about the live show. Eventually that will come. I really had good intentions, <laughs> but you know how it goes. See you next week.